for now yeah, um let's cut it. so tig this is your practice room yeah. where you spend many an hour a day um can you tell us a bit about your practice schedule um well it depends if i've got anything coming up or not but um we've got a concert in a couple of weeks so i'm trying to get in about five or six hours a day but um <clears throat> the rest of the time i usually do about three or four or even none to sort of okay to so, for example, if you're doing a six-hour day practice, would you do that all in one go? Um, the thing is that uh, with university and teaching and things, sometimes you, you don't really have the luxury of splitting it up as much as you'd like to. So sometimes you kind of need to do it all in one go just because you've got other things to do. But ideally, if I had a free day, then yeah, I'd do it in about three, three lots of two hours with breaks in between. Okay. And so, how do you pace yourself? I mean, how, what do you do during your breaks to relax? Uh, oh, just anything really. Um, just, uh, I don't know, watch TV or just something completely different. Play on the nothing. computer? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and um, how do you keep yourself motivated during the practice time? Oh, well, that, that really depends on what you've got coming up. If you don't have anything in the immediate future, it can be really difficult to motivate yourself. Uh, for example, over the holidays, I was... I had actually a lot of work to do, but I didn't have any dates where I knew I had to play it by this point. So it was actually really, really hard to, to do a lot of practice then. But whereas now, because I've got a concert coming up in a couple of weeks, um, the fact that I have to have the music learnt by then is, is enough motivation. Otherwise, it's, it's, it's very difficult to And so what would you say is your the biggest motivator? Um, well, I haven't entered a competition in a long time. But I remember the competition, the very few competitions I have entered, yeah, that really um, got me working, got me practicing. Um, just because, yeah, I don't know, I'm, I'm more competitive than I like to admit, so I think that's a real, that, that really pushes me. Uh, other than that, it's, yeah, it's concerts or, or even, even lessons, actually. If I know I've got a, I've got a lesson with, um, not my regular teacher, but with somebody who's like a visiting professor at the academy, and I know I'm playing to that person, and that will definitely push me to, to want to impress that one, because I know I'll only get one shot with that person. So I try and give them a good idea of what I can do. And do you think having a competitive nature is an important quality for a concert pianist? Um, I don't know if it's important, but I think I've, all, the, all the people I know are anyway. I don't know if that has sort of helped them you know get to where they are now i think it's just a, a natural thing to f you know to want to practice that much you know as much as you need to really to to make a professional career out of this 
um, I think naturally you're going to be a little bit competitive anyway because yeah, it's one of the strongest motivators and um, it's, not, it's not really in keeping with the spirit of music so it's not really nice to sort of only focus on what the other people are doing and how far they've gone in competitions and all this kind of thing. At the end of the day you really need to do it because you love the pieces that you're playing and the music that you're making. But um, a little bit of a you know, competitive push every now, every now and then is, can be quite helpful. Yeah. And also I presume quite necessary in this day and age because in order to make it to the top you need to win competitions and... Well that's one, that's one way of making it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's the most... Yeah, that, that, that's, that is one way, but not the only way. Well, what are the other ways? Well, I mean, it's uh, a question of going out there, making opportunities for yourself, not just waiting for um, people to come to you, you know. It, it, you don't always have to just look at the competitions. You can just be, um, you know, collaborating with other people and seeing what they're doing, and um, you know, making yourself sort of making your name known. And a lot of a lot of careers have been launched because of chance meetings with with famous conductors or whatever. So, um, and people have just completely bypassed the the, the competition route. But but uh, but uh, it's it's not to say that competitions are a bad way to go about it. You know, that's a very valid way to. But it's not the only. Okay. And to date, what has been your greatest, not necessarily achievement, but your most, I don't know, adrenaline-filled moment, exciting in, moment? In performance. In performance, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I haven't actually played um, a concerto with an orchestra before. Um, I did it with Sussex Orchestra last year, and that was quite adrenaline-filled because... I played, yeah, so again, bad competition experience. I played it before the same piece, Mac Man, my second tram concerto, in a, in a competition, and it went horribly wrong. And um, and this was a few months before I, I played it with the orchestra, and um, that that experience was really hard to shake. So when I was playing the entire way through, normally when you play a piece, you kind of settle into it and you kind of relax a bit because you know you've done the preparation. But, I just had this horrible memory of, of it going so badly wrong before, so that kind of really kept me on the edge of my seat the entire performance, so that was probably the most adrenaline filled, and I was absolutely exhausted at the end of it, yeah. So that was kind of adrenaline filled, but in, in a negative in a, way? In a, in a bad way, yeah, not, not, not in a great way. I mean, afterwards I was really happy with it, but during the actual performance, I, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't a great, very good experience, to be honest, yeah. And what about your, your greatest moment for you personally as a musician? Um, like probably, an achievement or a performance or yeah, well, probably uh, probably getting into the academy because uh, after after a few years at university you don't really know where you stand and getting into the academy kind of gave me the you know was another um, was very very encouraging basically so it, it made me feel that I was doing the right thing and I was on the right track and as um, as far as performing goes um, do you have a preference um, do you, I mean, do you prefer to compete? Do you prefer to play to large audiences, small audiences? Do you have any kind of... Well, no, given, given the choice, it wouldn't be to play in a, in a competition because it, 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 that, that competitive side of things, yeah, it can be necessary and there's lots and lots of piano competitions and it's almost uh, encouraged in, in the music world, but I don't really like it because it's, you're, not, you're, not, you're not playing really for the right reasons, you're playing to beat somebody else, you know, which isn't... Which isn't really, which is not really very nice when you think about it. And it's much nicer just to play in a concert where people have come to see you anyway, you know. So there's no feeling of competitive. There's no winner. There's no loser. You know. There's just a good concert, hopefully. Um, so definitely, I'd, I'd much rather play in, in, a, in, a, in a just a pure concert um, setting, um, either either by myself or with other people in a shared recital or in a group, whatever, you know. But that, that's that's much. Um, it's got a much nicer spirit. And as far as um, personality goes, um, do you think one needs a very thick skin to succeed as a um, as a performer? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, because you're going to play to lots of different teachers, lots of different people, and a lot of them can be really quite tough. And um, you know, sort of com compliments and praise aren't, aren't aren't given out. You know, very very. Um, it's not, it's not it's not a common thing really to sort of praise uh, students because they're basically trying to correct you I suppose yeah and, and yeah so and that's if you're job. Playing, if, yeah if you're playing in a class uh, they're not there to say what you're doing right they're there only to say what you're doing wrong and and if you let that get to you that can be 
um, that can be really discouraging, and it shouldn't. It should definitely, you know, the criticism, all the criticism you should get, you should be able to turn that into something that you can use. So in that sense, yeah, definitely having a thick skin is important. Um, um, but that you need to balance it with not being, you know, delusional because that's another danger. I mean, I noticed um, a few years ago when I was at school, music school, um, not through, not because of the the, the students' fault, actually, mainly because of the parents. They have they get it into their head that they're going to be the next great thing, and it's it's just not going to happen. And unfortunately, if they keep down that path for too long, then you know. They're, they're, they're too old really to sort of find something find something new so it's, it's really important to um, get honest evaluations of, of of your of your playing and to not be afraid to say to people what you want out of music and out of the piano and for them to so that they can say well you know what in all honesty I don't think I don't think you're being realistic you know so it's going to be hard to take but eventually that will help help you out a lot more because uh, you'll know where you stand and you can start looking down other avenues or whatever. Okay, and um, as far as um, your personality and having a thick skin and a relatively competitive spirit, do you think that's something that you've always had or is that something that's developed through your musical training? Um, well, a competitive nature, I think, yeah, I've probably always been a little bit competitive because it's not just in music, like just in various things like... Um, tennis? Like tennis, for example, yeah. Which I'm just a little bit like, yeah, you like to win. Irrationally competitive for no reason. Like I have, it's not exactly something I'm particularly proud of or good at. But you know, um, yeah, losing sort of bothers me at that. So, so I guess yeah, that that's just just part of my character. As far as developing a thick skin, well, I, I had a teacher who was actually um, great, great teacher, great guy, but um, could really criticise and in quite harsh ways and and. You, you, you do all that enough and you yeah you start to sort of shrug it off a little bit more and I think that I think that helps you know because if you have somebody who sugarcoats everything and says how good you are all the time then it's not really going to push you but if you have somebody who very occasionally says you know what that was a good job the rest of the time is is criticizing and saying what's wrong and you know what you're what you need to do better and all this kind of thing it, it gives you something to work towards and it's um it you know his his words mean a lot more if um, they're generally more critical rather than if he's doling up the praise all the time then you start to kind of ignore it or to expect it or to rely on it a little bit so um, yeah I think the thick skin has definitely developed yeah. Sure and you've had a variety of um, different teachers um, and one of which um, is the son of um, Ashkenazi uh, so yeah. for question Ashkenazi um, gave you some, some lessons um, one summer, I think it was. Yeah. Um, and what was he like as a teacher? Um, well, uh, yeah, no, I actually, he taught me on the chimney music course first. And um, I hadn't actually heard of his father at this point. This was a while ago, like I was quite young. And, um, but then um, I, I found out who Vladimir Eskenazi was, and I was like, wow, okay, all right, this is quite a big deal. And uh, so I went to the chimney music course, and he was, he was my coach. And yeah, he was really serious. Like, I was like, oh my God, you know, so. So I was playing to him, he sort of sat very straight back in the corner with a really sort of solid kind of expression on his face, sort of staring at my fingers. And yeah, that was quite, that was quite intense. But um, very quickly actually he started to open up and he's actually a really, really friendly guy, um, really nice. And, uh, and then eventually he invited me to study with him for a week, which was great. So he was, um, I thought he would be a lot more serious um, coming from the musical background that he does. And he is, and he takes it, he does take it very seriously. But he's um, a really light-hearted guy, and very, very kind, and very encouraging. So yeah, very inspiring person to work with. 